There once was a crochet airframe named Tucket. Oh, family friendly. <laughs> Today, we're gonna be making bucket hats. So we're gonna bucket. <laughs> Let's begin right next. Hi, I'm Mikey from the Crochet Crowd and thank you so much for joining our channel today. I'm here to inspire you and create magic with your crochet hook. Are you ready to play? Oh yeah, that sounds good. Welcome and let's do a bucket hat together. The title of this video is the size that we're gonna be working with today. This particular pattern has several sizes including all the way from zero to six months to an adult size. You'll find a link in the more information of this video in order to find the free patterns for that. And this is designed by Sarah from Repeat Crafter Me. You can see that she has extensions that you can add to it whether it's eyes or crab claws, uh, claws or maybe even a whale. That's something that you can decide for yourself but today I'm only focusing on the basics of these hats. So I'm going to recommend a couple things. She has Super Saver as Red Heart Super Saver as her suggestion. If you are uh, knowing anything about heat, cotton is your best way to go. So Lily Sugar and Cream is the better way to go. It's 100% cotton. Cotton keeps you warm but it also keeps you cool. So this is what you would be looking at. So if you're finding acrylic in the Super Saver too hot to wear, switch over to your um, Lily Sugar and Cream. You can do Bernat Handicrafter or maybe even Peaches and Cream. We're going to be using a 5 millimeter size H crochet hook today and let's begin the size that's promised in the video title. We're going to begin with the size zero to six months and we're going to be using the five millimeter size H crochet hook in order to play. This color here is called light blue. So let's begin to do that. We're going to begin by creating a magic ring. It's also called a magic circle or an adjustable circle. I want you to place your hand in front and lay down the yarn in the front of your hand like so. We have videos just specifically on magic rings if you need that. So just leaving these two fingers out I want you to just take the yarn from behind this leading to the ball and bring it over and flip your hand over like this and cross over. Okay, so in your hand use two fingers and wrap and cross over. And use that third finger to keep the crossing over happening like that. I want you to take your hook like that and I want you to pick it up and pull through and there is your magic ring right there. So slide out your fingers and when you go to crochet I need you to crochet around the ring plus this loose strand here and we're gonna pull on that later to bring it to conclusion. So let's do this and let's begin the next portion next. In Sarah's patterns she always does the chaining two to build up the next round at the end of an instruction but the way that I teach I always do it first. So just make sure that you're keeping an eye on that. So we're going to start with this and right where you are I need you to place in a total of uh, 11 double crochets into the magic ring itself. So wrap the hook and go right in, pull through and then pull through two and two. So there's one. So we need to do that 11 times. So we're just double crochets into the ring. So I'll count them as we go. So there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And before you close that I need you to make sure there's only eleven. Okay, so just count out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now I want you to take this strand and I want you just to lightly pull on it and I want you to join it to the top of the first double crochet that you have. If you're not sure which one it is count back 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and it's right there. The 11th is right there and you're just gonna join it and you're not done so just pull it, that strand and I want you to finish the magic ring. So turn it upside down and pull that strand so it completely closes down the center. You're not done. You can't trim this at this moment because this will just pop out. So I need you to grab it in a tapestry needle. This is just a wool needle. I picked it up at a local uh, fabric shop and I'm just going to go through 
and I'm gonna continue to go just in the stitches. I don't want you to see this needle on the good side. And I want you just to pull that through. So go through once, pull on it tight, and then through a different spot in the opposite direction. Again, I don't wanna see that needle. That's the second time. And finally the third time is what you need to do. So some people cut out their magic ring circles um, without weaving in their tails and then it falls out and then they're upset about it and for good reason. So once you have that done, if you feel it's secure enough, then you can do that and trim. And I want you to put your hook back onto and this will begin and we are now officially down, uh, done round number one. Let's do round number two. You will notice in this pattern it's stated to do uh, chain two at the end of a round which I never did. So you're going to chain two now. This chain two will never count as a stitch so make sure you don't do that and this helps fill in the spaces that are left when you do slip stitching. Starting in the same one that you did the slip stitch with I need you to place in two double crochets. Okay and then advance to the next stitch and then put two double crochets in there. So you're just putting in two double crochets into each stitch all the way around and you will have a total of 22 double crochets when you get around and that's where I'll pick you up in just a moment. So please complete round number two. I'm going to show you a cheating technique and this is not written in the pattern. This is just experience showing you. So normally what we do is that we put two double crochets in each. This here is part of the first stitch and this always creates an unsightly gap that is very noticeable if you're a crocheter for sure. So what you can do instead of putting two into the uh, last one, only put one and watch what I do. I'm gonna do a two together using this stitch which I'm supposed to but just using this space just to hide that space. So watch, just yarn over and going into the same stitch that you wanna go into, you're gonna pull through pull through two and hold. You're not done. I want you to go into this space here. Do the same thing. So yarn over and in, pull through, pull through two and hold. This is only gonna be a two together stitch. So when you're done the stitch and you pull through all three, that's only classified as one stitch. So you still have technically only two into the last one but you have an extra spoke in there and when you uh, slip stitch this to the top of the first double crochet, you are just going to do that and you are gonna see that the gap is completely gone. That's just a tip. That was round number two. So you can do that in this particular pattern when you have the last stitch. So I'll show you those each time but I will not be as slow about it in the future. Let's move on to round number three. So now we're going to begin and start to grow this out. So we're going to start by chaining two and it's gonna be two double crochet into the first stitch and then the next stitch is going to be one double crochet all by itself. That's gonna be your sequence all the way around. So the sequence is the next one will have two double crochets into the same one and the one after that will be one double crochet by itself. And I need you to do that all the way around and this will be round number, this will be round number three. This will be round number three. So I'm coming around, your very last stitch is just one by itself and that's just keeping in the sequence but let me show you, I'm gonna do that two together again. So you're gonna go into the last stitch, pull through, pull through two and hold and then go into the space. Pull through two and hold and then pull through all three. So you still have only one stitch technically and then you've got that space filled in and then you can just join it to the beginning. Double crochet and again the closing gap is gone. Let's move to round number four. Let's begin number four. We're gonna grow out even more. So the chain two does not count as a stitch. In the very first stitch, you'll place in two double crochets like you had been before. This time though, the next two stitches will be one double crochet by itself. So one by itself and two by itself. That's our sequence. So the next one is two into the same stitch. So one and two share the same stitch and then the other two that are gonna go in are by themselves. So one by itself and two by itself and I need you to do that all the way around for round number four. 
I'm coming up to the end of number four just keeping in my sequence. I have two left over that are at the end and that's just keeping a sequence as I mentioned and the very last one I'll do my little trick in order to continue to hide that closing space. Let's just join it to the beginning and let's start to do round number five through ten. So let's begin rounds number five through ten. You're just gonna do it on your own but I'll just quickly demonstrate just to get you started. You're going to chain two and you'll double crochet in the same one as the join. You are only gonna apply one double crochet into each one of the stitches going all the way around. You can do that little trick like I showed you at the very last stitch in order to do that two together to hide in the space to keep it consistent. And I need you to do now rounds number five through ten on your own and when I come back I'll pick you up on number eleven. You're going to notice that it will start bowling out like the shape of a hat uh, really in the next few rounds. So please do rounds number five through ten next. So I'm now at the end of number 10. One thing about baby hats that, and I don't have kids, I've never had kids, but um, what I notice for myself is that because I've never had kids, I don't have a perspective on hat sizes when it comes to children. That's probably why I don't design very many of them. But they're a lot bigger than you would expect them to be. A lot of people when they think about making hats for charity, some of the hats that you see online are really quite small unless it's intentionally to be a fur premium. So it's one of those ones that you think it might be too big until you put it onto the child and you may be surprised. Let's begin number 11 next. So let's begin number 11. You're going to chain two and in the first one you're going to put two double crochets into the same one. Then the next one you'll put in one double crochet by itself. That's gonna be your sequence going around. So the next one is two double crochets into the same one and then the next one is one by itself and I need you to do that all the way around for number 11. Coming around on number 11 and I just have one single or one double crochet in the last one but I'm gonna do my little secret that I have to keep that sealed and then I'm going to attach to the top of the first double crochet. So moving on to number 12 next. Number 12 we're going to chain two and just apply one uh, double crochet into each stitch all the way around and do that and I'll be right back in a moment. Number 12. I'm coming up to the end of number 12 and I'm just putting one double crochet in each and I'm doing my little thing at the end just to hide that thing so you don't see the line and then join it to the first double crochet. Let's do round number 13 which will conclude today's hat. So I'm gonna give you a couple choices here. You can either do a crab stitch which I'll demonstrate. It's also called the reverse single crochet and if you really app, uh, don't like that stitch because some people are really don't like that stitch um, just chain one and apply one single crochet all around. So you can do that on, on your own. So I'll do the reverse. So you're just gonna chain up one and in the same one that you have the join just going in and pulling it through and then pull through two. Very similar to what you already know. Now you're gonna go into the last stitch that you were in before. So going in, yarn over, pull through and then pull through the two. So you're going backwards. So going to the top of the next stitch and after about three stitches you'll see this technique and it will have like a beautiful texture at the end. So just keep on doing reverse single crochet or the crab stitch all the way around and I'll see you back here in just a moment. Okay once you get all the way back around what I'm going to recommend to you is that you're just gonna slip stitch to the beginning reversed single crochet and you're just gonna hold that for a second. Now I need you to use a tapestry needle to finish this thing off. If you don't and you use your hook to weave in the chances are the yarn is going to fall out. So turn it to the inside of the hat and apply your tapestry needle. Remember how I showed you going back for three times? Yes it's the same thing. So we're just going to stay within the stitch work on the underside of the brim. So when you turn this over you should not see that going through. So you go through once and it's best if you split the fibers. So don't just go in between the yarn strands but actually split the fibers and that makes it much more difficult to get out. So even if you have to frog something it's once you do that it's kind of like a, a one time thing and that's it you're done. So I want you to go back and forth and do that three times and then you're good to go. And this will conclude then how you would do the zero to six month size for a baby bucket hat just like so. That's neat right? So trim and you're good to enjoy your new hat. That's it for today and I'll see you again next time.